To factor by grouping, you want to think four terms. When you have four terms, like so, one, two, three, four, you're probably going to have to group. There are three steps to grouping to be successful. First, create groups of two. Second, factor each group using the distributive property. And third, factor out the main quote unquote group. Let's go ahead and try this one. First, create groups of two. Using parentheses, let's group these first two terms and these second two terms together. Next, we want to take these as separate entities and factor each of them using the distributive property. Looking at this 12p cubed and this 21p squared, I can pull this 3p squared out, leaving me with 4p minus 7. Moving on to this 28 and this 49, I can pull this 7 out, leaving me with 4p minus 7. From here, you might notice that we've got a 4p minus 7 here and a 4p minus 7 here. That means you're on the right track. These always should be identical because for step number three, what we're going to do here is we're going to factor out this whole group from the equation. Just like we do when you factor by distribution, we're going to pull this 4p minus 7 out because it is a common factor of each of these terms. After that, we're just going to be left with 3p squared plus 7. And here we can consider ourselves factored. Let's try this one. Well, I see four terms, so I know I'm going to group. First group of two, second group of two. Now let's see what we can do with distribution. The 6v cubed and the 16v squared has a 2v squared in common, leaving us with 3v minus 8. Now this 21 and 56 have a 7 in common, and that's going to leave us with 3v minus 8. Yeah, boy! I got this 3v minus 8 and 3v minus 8. Perfect. Let's pull that out front. And after doing that, we're left with 2v squared plus 7. And we are factored. Here we go. Four terms again. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. What can I take here? 2x squared times x plus 2. And what have we got? Oh, I don't see anything in common between this x and this 2. Well, if there's nothing in common, there's always, well, there is always something in common, and it's just going to be a 1. So whenever there's nothing you can pull out, just pull out a 1 and leave yourself with what you started, right? 1 times x plus 2 is x plus 2. So we're good. From there, we have this x plus 2s in commons. We pull that out. And we're left with 2x squared plus 1. Factored. Let's try one more. x squared minus 3x minus 4x plus 12. After grouping those from the first part, we can pull out an x. And the second part, we can pull out a 4. That leaves us with 4x plus 3. And then we've got an x minus 3x plus... Wait a minute. This x minus 3 and this x plus 3 are not the same. Okay, this is a common mistake made. When we pulled out this minus 4 here, if we redistributed that, that would give us negative 4x minus 12, which is not what we started with. So, super important. Whenever we pull out a negative from this group, we have to flip this sign to accommodate for the fact that that negative is going to distribute across. So, let's get rid of our error right here. Dun, dun, dun. And let's proceed the correct way. Just like before, we could pull out an x, leaving x minus 3. And we could pull out a 4, but since we have that negative, instead of x plus 3, we're going to have x minus 3, flipping that sign like we talked about. Now we've got what we want, x minus 3 and x minus 3. Those are the same. Pull that out, leaving us with x minus 4. And here we've got our factored answer. Factored.